Hi, this is Ibadi and X from The Candid Frame, and we're going to be pulling some images from the Flickr pool. I'm going to try to make these videos a little shorter. They've been getting a little long, and so I'm just going to be choosing three images today. And today I wanted to talk about a little kiss of light, just a little touch of light that really can make and transform a, a photograph. Um, many of the images that we typically see, the light may be fairly even, uh, and there's nothing really spectacular about it. Uh, but sometimes, you know, we can take a very ordinary scene and photograph it, and the results are kind of okay. But there are other times where that same ordinary scene becomes very interesting, maybe even remarkable as a result of just a little kiss of light. So the first image that I wanted to show is uh, this image by Rolando uh, Buna, uh, Bunag. And he made this image with a Fuji X100S. And it looks, he was shooting wide open at an 80th of a second at 6400. And this looks to be just a, a casual scene in a, in a cafe with his kids uh, sitting with a tablet and uh, with his headphones on. He's completely oblivious to everything around him. And uh, I love the light that's on his face. I think this is, this is the kind of scene we see all the time. I spend a lot of time in coffee houses uh, periodically uh, working and trying to get stuff done. And this is a... This is a moment that I think I've seen a thousand times where people are, are completely absorbed in their, uh, in their tablets or, or their phones. And uh, there are a lot of pictures that people make today of people on their devices. But I think this, this is a really cool shot as a result of the light on the boy's, uh, on the boy's face. Uh, imagine this shot without that light. It wouldn't be particularly interesting. It, it just, it would lack a little something. And by having that that light coming from the device on his face, he becomes the focus of attention. Our eyes go directly to his face because one, it's it's pretty much the brightest element in the frame, as I've, as I've, I've referred to before. Um, also, it's great points of contrast, sharpness, and everything here seems to just guide our eye to him. We have this figure here who's sitting here and our eyes go here. We have this table here and uh, it creates a sort of triangle, but it's, it's as if it's uh, an arrow directing us to, to, to go here. And uh, all of these things help to sort of build the composition and make it a, a nice image of a very ordinary scene, but it's the light that makes all the difference. Here's a shot by Daryl James, which he shot at night. He says, uh, uh, it said, Sea Eagle Lagoon, as the night comes in, a bokeh panorama of 20-odd images. So I'm not sure exactly what that, um, what that means, but for me, this, this shot that was made at, at night is a really beautiful, uh, nice uh, sort of landscape shot done at night where we get this light, and I don't know where it's covering from. It's probably coming from some sort of artificial light source that's uh, within the scene. And now that I look more carefully, I see this light post. So this, this light post is providing the illumination for this area here. And it makes for a, a really nice shot. You can see that the other area here in the foreground and in the distant background is, uh, is much darker in this night scene. And it's this light coming from this lamp that is just making this, making this pop really, really nicely. And that's the one thing about night photography, shooting stuff at night, is looking for those little pockets of light. Um, you know, a lot of us don't shoot at night, and I think it's a missed opportunity because that, that isolated artificial light source can result in some really remarkable looks. And I think it's really interesting that uh, this black and white rendering of the scene has a very, very sort of ghostly effect to it. It seems a, a little bit surreal, but I really like the, the, the way that that light um, really draws our attention to this to the scene here and makes for one really beautiful shot. And here's a shot by Kim Allen, shot with a Coolpix uh, P520, little point and shoot camera at uh, 1 250th of a second at at 3.1. And here the light makes all the difference. I mean, this is. Uh, um, a storefront window of some sort, probably a, a store that sells like vintage clothing and, and other other knickknacks. And it's the light that comes through the window and hits the mannequin head and these other elements here that elevates the shot. You know, imagine this shot with the scene just 
either overcast or on a cloudy day where the light's so much more even. And it, it is, doesn't become a very interesting shot. It's just a document of the things that are behind the window. But in this case, that light, uh, wherever it's coming from, provides just the perfect illumination. It not only creates a contrast between what's in the forefront of the window and the darkness of the background, but it also creates this lovely saturation of color, especially the, the red lips, the red, what looks like to be a sign, uh, the red in the hat. Um, it's very, very neat. And we're obviously looking through a window because we have some reflection here, but uh, whatever it's reflecting is not being illuminated by this, by this light. It seems like the area that's being reflected in the window is largely relegated to shadow. So we don't have the usual distractions that we have in, in reflections. You can see in the corner here, you can see a little bit of the street, but other than that, you don't see much of anything else. And I like the fact that that uh, that Kim here uses the light really well to create this this great, great still life. So that's going to be it. Uh, I'm going to try and keep these things short relatively, um, but let me know what you think. Uh, email me or send me a message, and let me know whether you prefer the shorter or the longer uh, versions of these videos, and uh, I may just mix it up every once in a while. Now, one thing I would like to do is, is I'd like to provide a more... I don't know, harsh is not the right word, but I'd like to have a, a, a kind of critique of an image that's sort of welcomed by the photographers. Uh, there's some images here. Uh, there are a lot of images here that are good, but there's some images that, that, that fall off, you know, that fall short of the mark. And I don't want to, you know, surprise a photographer by uh, having them hear that uh, I'm tearing their images apart. So um, I'm not necessarily going to be mean. Uh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not built that way, but I do want to be more frank in terms of my critiques of some of the images. And if you're interested in receiving that, then in the tags for the images that you upload to the Flickr pool, just add the tag critique. And that will let me know that you're kind of open to a more um, uh, in-depth critique of the image than I may be giving in, in most of these videos. If you have found if you found us for the first time and this is your first time visiting the uh, the Candid Frame YouTube channel, well, there's a podcast called The Candid Frame, and uh, that's an interview show which features conversations with photographers from all over the world. So please check that out at thecandidframe.com. And if you like what you're seeing in these videos, please subscribe. Thanks a lot for joining me again, and I'll see you next time.